So we're going to look at some helicopter accidents or some pilots got into a situation where the power required to stop their descent was greater than the power they had available to them. They ended up hitting the ground pretty hard and destroying aircraft, basically. Now, they didn't truly get into a vortex ring state. They just exceeded the power they had available to them. So we'll take a look at, at uh, these next. The first one is uh, at a relatively high altitude. Looks like the altimeter is reading at 8,000 feet. They're in a Robinson 2. And if you look at the airspeed indicator, they're way behind ETL. As they transition and get on the backside of ETL, the aircraft starts to settle. You'll hear the horn come on, and it basically just ends up impacting the ground quite hard. So now we'll look at the same crash from uh, outside the aircraft as the aircraft comes in on approach and uh, you can see what it looks like from the outside. So the next accident we're going to look at was in uh, Golden, Colorado, uh, back in 2011. There's a uh, instructor and a student in a uh, Raven 2, R44 Raven 2, and um, it says that they had calculated the uh, in-ground effect hover limit of about 8,500 uh, and the uh, outer ground effect hover limit uh, to be only about 5,000 feet. Uh, unfortunately, they are operating at a density altitude of 10,600. And had he done any kind of a power check, he would have quickly realized that the last thing he wanted to do was slow down in this helicopter because he could quickly get into a situation where the power exceeded uh, that available. And he probably, and he was in it long enough, he probably uh, actually did get into vortex ring state in, uh, in this one. We'll take a look at it now. So this next one that we're going to look at is the Hughes 269, and it looks like he's coming into a, a mountain lake. Um, I'm sure it's a, quite a high density altitude. And if you look at the rotor wash on the water, you can tell that he comes in with uh, just a bit of a slight tailwind. And he slowed the aircraft down, uh, certainly looks like he's going less than ETL. And when he got less than ETL, the, basically the aircraft starts to settle into the water. Over water, you have no ground effect, all right? So over uh, soft surfaces like water or tall grass, there's very little ground effect, not like over a hard surface like a, a, a paved parking lot or a runway. So once he slowed down and it started to settle in and he was over a water surface and he kind of sealed his fate. Had he kept his speed up and actually went over to try to make a landing on the shoreline, uh, things may have been different, but unfortunately he got slow out over the water no ground effect, no, essentially, and settled into the water. So you also notice that as the aircraft uh, starts to lose rotor RPM and settle into the water, that the aircraft starts spinning to the right. And that happens frequently because not only, <clears throat> you know, when you degrade your RPM, you're not only losing uh, main rotor RPM, but you're losing tail rotor RPM as well. And so the effectiveness of the tail rotor is ever decreasing. And frequently when people will over pitch like that and run out of power and over pitch and degrade the rotor RPM, especially at a hover, you'll see the aircraft start to spin to the right because at one point you can add even full left pedal and you can't stop the spin because you've degraded your your uh, tail rotor RPM to a point that it, it can't overcome the amount of torque and your aircraft's going to continue to spin. So this next video we're going to look at is uh, another case of uh, exceeding the uh, power available to you. And it's in a little two-seat helicopter. You can see there's two people in the helicopter. They taxi, they kind of come up to a hover taxi over a river of some sort. 
and uh, apparently they're looking at the girls on the boat, which look like they're worth looking at. But uh, anyway, you'll notice that when he presses the left, so he's at a hover over water again. Again, remember, there's no ground effect over water. He's at kind of a high hover over water, two people. I'm sure he's at pretty much max gross weight, uh, probably pretty much at the limit of what the aircraft will do. And then he makes a left pedal turn. Well, when you push that left pedal, it takes power to make a left pedal turn and to rob himself of some horsepower. And as he makes the left pedal turn, you can hear, number one, you can see that the aircraft is starting to actually settle into the water. And you can actually hear a decrease in um, the uh, rotor RPM or the engine RPM. So when you exceed the um, power available, uh, you know, when the power requirements exceed the uh, power available to you, the aircraft's going to descend, okay? So if that happens close to the ground, then you can, you know, at 20 or 30 or 40 feet, you can descend into the ground, hit hard, and destroy the aircraft. If that occurs at a much higher altitude, let's say that we're five or 600 feet in the air and we slow down to try to do an OG hover or something, and we exceed the uh, power required, exceed the amount available, it's going to start descending. If it continues to descend and you don't do something to fix it, like get your nose down and get your speed up, then it will develop into the vortex ring state. So all of this argument about uh, settling with power versus vortex ring state is kind of a, a moot point because when you exceed the amount of power available or you get too slow, you're not pulling enough power to meet match the power requirements, the aircraft's going to descend. And if you don't check the descent, and if it long, goes long enough, you will eventually develop vortex ring state. So if you guys liked the video, be sure to uh, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, and uh, thanks for watching.